am the flowers, please take my life and let it be. When you turn to God, repenting of wrong, God meets you with love. God loves you forever and always, no matter what. Be at peace. You are forgiven, loved, and embraced by the of God Almighty. Thanks be to God.
absolutely beautiful player. Thank you. As we get rearranged up here, I invite all of our young disciples on up. Come on down. <laughs> How are you doing today? Okay. So, in today's worship service, we are going to be talking about dreams from God. Okay, so we've been actually talking about dreams throughout the whole season of the book. So we've got a few more Sundays talking about this. And the scripture reading that we're going to read today is actually... Um, several readings from the book of Matthew, where there are five different dreams. Can any of you think about a time, a dream that comes from God to, to somebody? Yeah? You remember that? What do you remember? Yeah, okay. Sure. <laughs> so there are five dreams, right? So the first one is where Joseph has a dream, and in that dream, God tells him to do not talk her, and that he can marry Mary, the mother of Jesus. So then there's another dream that comes from a magi, and in that dream, God tells them to go home and come back. And then another dream comes, warning Joseph and his family to leave for Egypt so that they are safe. And then another dream comes saying, it's not safe, you can go back. And then another dream comes and says, go a little bit further <laughs> into, a, into a different region of Galilee. And so these dreams that come from God are dreams that guide us. And so what I want you guys to know is that God directs us God protects us, and God lets us know when something isn't quite right. And it, it is our job to listen, to listen to God. Okay. Okay. You guys haven't had any dreams lately? No? Okay. Sometimes dreams can be good, sometimes they can be scary. And that is kind of like the dreams we'll read about today. There were some that were dreams of comfort and some that were dreams of alarm, of get up and go. And when we ever have questions on what to do, we can talk to our church family and our family at home, and you can pray to God about what, what to do next. Okay? Okay. Will you guys be with me? Okay, you repeat after me. I know we're about on the big screen. You see it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God help, us help us to listen to your dreams. Help us to be brave to go. Help us to be brave to go. Help us to be wise to come back. Help us to be wise to come back. Help us to listen to you always. Help us to listen to you always. Amen. 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 Um, friends, you may head to Sunday school and or the nursery. Whenever there's an open floor, right? It's like, I do need to do a cartwheel right here in this teeny tiny space. <laughs> Friends, it is a joy to be with you all today. Uh, it is a big day with ordination and installation and our annual meeting. It is the day that we gather first to worship. And so in this time, I'm going to share with you a reflection. We're going to be reading through the scriptures. And with each scripture passage that I selected for today, there's going to be a short reflection and maybe some silence, and we'll journey through this together. Okay? 
So, as I shared with our kiddos, this epiphany season, I have invited all of us to dream. We've talked about God's dreams for the world, dreams of peace and harmony, dreams of hunger and thirst being quenched dreams of God's kingdom here on earth. And as we are here on this day, I've been reflecting on my time, my brief time with you all here at Ogden Presbyterian Church. And I have enjoyed getting to know all of you and to see your work and to read our annual report full of the mission and hard work and growth that has happened here. I am proud of how OPC has worked to learn what Jesus knew and to do what Jesus did. And I also prayerfully wonder about our future, about the year ahead. And as I have been praying about that, I was led to read through this series of dreams that I'm going to share with you today. There are five dreams in total. And most of them, four of them actually, were dreams that Joseph had. One of them was a dream to the Magi, and it, the other encounters during this story of the Nativity story and into Epiphany, um, there are sacred and holy appearances of angels, but these in scripture are described as dreams. So we will begin with Joseph's first dream as he was quietly thinking about divorcing Mary. Technically, they were engaged at this time and her pregnancy was known to him. And as he thought about what to do, our scripture reading and our reflection picks up with Matthew 1, verses 18 to 24. As he considered this, that being to divorce her, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she shall have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. Joseph took risk, a big risk, risk with faith, partnered hand in hand. The world of that time would have called him crazy to stay in that relationship, crazy to follow through on that commitment, and he would have been free to leave and perhaps even praised for doing so. The world would not understand this dream from God. But we know that God had a plan. Joseph had to take a risk and not listen to the world, but listen to God. He had to step out in faith, risking it all, his future, his reputation, his family line, to follow God. I pray, may we, may we all have faith like this, faith in our almighty God to take big risks. I want us to take risks to boldly serve our community. Let's dream. Let's dream together on how this will look and together, Let's discern that call. Our scripture continues with the story of the pregnancy and birth of Jesus. 
We pick up with our reading from the Magi. This is Matthew 2, verses 10 through 12. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child was with Mary, and they bowed down to worship him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when it was time to leave, they returned to their country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Friends, these magi were experienced travelers. And by their gifts, we can suspect that they were people of means. To go a different pathway would mean a longer route, a harder route, a more expensive route. It would take more time and more energy. And yet, they were wise enough to spend more time, more money, and more energy to follow God's direction for the safety and well-being of themselves, for the safety and well-being of Jesus and his family. It takes courage to change our pathways. A lot of extra effort. My pathway changed a few times this morning, right? As you see, McKelly's not with us, Ethan is at home. We have readapted and addressed all the things because that's how it is with kids. It's not just courage, it does take time and it takes more effort. And yet, when God is calling us to do something, it is important that we are brave enough to do it that we are wise enough to pause and plan for it, and then have the courage enough to put it into action. Just like our throughway is big and smooth and usually the fastest way to get to places. Sometimes we have to take different roads. My hope and prayer for our church is that when we are being warned by God, when we are being warned by the Holy Spirit, that something is no longer good for us or good for us to do, that we change directions. We do not want to simply travel the most traveled pathway over and over and over again. But when God calls us, we will make new pathways. I invite you to silently pray about that. Our scripture reading continues in Matthew 2 13 and 15. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with child and his mother, said the angel. Stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken to the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. As a parent, I, I can only imagine getting this type of dream of waking up in a cold sweat with urgency and panic of it is time to go. We have to get out of here. I don't know if you all have experienced that shift internally within your life, whether it's a, a child or a parent or a loved one. I think about um, when McKinley was a was a baby. She was <clears throat> she was very sick, and um, there was that internal thing of like, "We're doing okay. We're doing okay. We're doing okay." To we got to go to the hospital now, right? And there's something that switches 
inside of your soul where you kick into gear and you go because it needs to be done. There is an urgency with this that we may be called to respond with in certain times. Joseph had that dream where the angel said, get up and flee in the day. May we have faith enough to get up with haste. May we not delay with doubts. Joseph had a duty to care for and protect Jesus, God's child. And we too have the duty to care for God's children with urgency when circumstances demand it. Lord, help us to do just that. Dream 4, Matthew 2, 19 and 21. When Herod died, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up and take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill him are dead. And so Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. And when he learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son, he was afraid to go there. This is one of those moments in scripture and in our lives where we can imagine that God calls you to do something and you don't have the full story. We had just have the next step. And sometimes we are called to do just the next step before we are given clarity on the next one of where we will stay. God calls us to do both things and to return to the land where Jesus was wanted dead in would naturally stir up fear and concern. And so this created, this caused boldness. It, it needed boldness from the family to listen to that dream and to go. When you, I don't know how many of you are good with, you know, your maps and, and such, but if you can envision in your mind, um, I don't know, I do it like this, right? So pitch, picture the Mediterranean Sea, you've got Italy, around here, way over here, <laughs> is Israel, right? <laughs> I know, you're all laughing at me, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> in this region, on the east side of the Mediterranean Sea, Joseph, Jesus, and Mary would have fleed southwest to Egypt. There they stayed. And when they were called back, when they re-enter into Israel, the first region that you enter in, I compare it to like the first state of the United States, if you were to do it by comparison, is Judea, where Herod was the king. Herod's son had taken over. So he had, Joseph had led his family back into Israel, into the very region where Herod's son was now in war. He listened. He was nervous. But completing that step, dream five comes. Dream five is this, Matthew 22 and 33, that after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So again, go back to that map. Israel, Judea is at the bottom, Samaria, Galilee. This is the northern section. So God was telling him to journey on, to continue north. So the family, having journeyed on to the region of Galilee, the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. And this fulfilled what the prophets had said, he will be called a Nazarene. God was in his call, to one destination and the next. It takes courage to only know the next step. You guys have heard me talk about me discerning my call to become a commissioned pastor. And there were times 
or long stretch where I didn't, when people would say, do you want to be an actor? I get so nervous. <laughs> I don't think so. But I know God has called me to take this class and I have peace about this next step. And with that, we journey forward. And that is what we are called to do. So these five dreams remind us of how God calls us to be bold, to have faith, to have trust. God reminds us that he is the provider directing us in each step. And as we reflect on the year behind, friends, let's discern our next steps together. God will speak to us. Let us close with this prayer. Oh, yeah. God, you have called us to be your church, to be your hands and your feet in this world. Call us out to where you want us to go and tell us what to do. Help us to overcome the fear so that we may be bold. Help us to not get stuck in our comforts of what is familiar, but help us to be faithful. Lord, we lift up our new deacons and our elders today as they help us by nurturing us by discerning with us, leading and guiding this church community. Holy One, we thank you that you speak to us through whispers of the heart, through dreams, through visions, through words spoken by you, by friends of disciples in this world. That you have spoken and you will continue to speak to us. Open our ears so that we can hear you clearly. Help us to be faithful disciples. In your holy name. Amen. In response, let's sing together hymn 343, called as partners in Christ's service.
Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Peter. We are now at the time for our service of ordination and installation. I'm going to invite Don up here. He's going to help me with, uh, with this section. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. Remember the grace of the servant of God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. The is the gift of the Spirit to be used for common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are called into the Church of Christ by baptism, marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples and servants of the Lord within the community of the church. Some are called to participate in service as deacons, as elders, and as ministers of word and sacrament. <coughs> Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues to work, providing for ministries of caring and compassion in the world, ordering the governance of the church and preaching the word and administrating the sacraments. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session of the Iron Presbyterian Church now ordains and installs to active service, Cindy Lodice as deacon. The session also installs to active service those who have previously been ordained, Deacon Sandy Mandarama, Jenny Hodge, and Michelle Rezapalia, and elders Gordon Chapman and Sandy Friday. Friends, those whose names were just read, would you come down and join us up front? Friends, I'm sure many of you noticed that I pulled the baptismal font up here today. Because in this next section, we are going to reaffirm our baptism of God. This is something that many of you have participated in. And this is something, an outward symbol of God's forever grace, being fully adopted into the family of God washed clean and made new. And so let us together read these things. Ordination calls the whole church to a renewed commitment. It reminds us to bear gladly the yoke of Christ given in the covenant of baptism. Let us therefore reaffirm our baptismal vows renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. This is for all of us. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil in its power in the world? I do. Do you turn to Jesus and accept him as your Lord and Savior, Savior trusting in his grace and love. Amen. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Amen. Let us all stand and profess this day. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He is 
ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come for us as the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Congregation, you may sit. Eternal and gracious God, we give thanks in countless ways that you have revealed yourself in ages past and have blessed us with signs of your grace. We praise you that through the waters of sea, you led your people from Israel out of bondage into freedom of the land of your promise. We praise you for sending us Jesus, your son, who for us was baptized through the waters of Jordan and was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism and his death and resurrection, you set us free from bondage of sin. You cleanse us and give us rebirth. We praise you that in baptism, you give us your Holy Spirit who teaches us and leads us into all truths, filling us with a variety of gifts that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as royal priesthood. By your Holy Spirit, renew us. May we be empowered to do your will and to continue forever in the risen life of Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. We remember our baptism. In the presence of God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. We also take this time to place an anointing. As I explain to those who are down here this morning, and I'm going to come down and show you. <clears throat> I have anointing oil. Throughout scripture, anointing oil is used to anoint leaders to anoint priests, to anoint the sick who need healing, who those, uh, also anoint those who are getting ready to pass on for more life with God in heaven. And so today, we anoint each of our new leaders, and I apologize, my back is to you. There's no good way to do this. <laughs> I'll just keep spinning. Um, <laughs> with us, Gordon. I know you and the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Sin, I anoint you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Remember your baptism and be thankful. I anoint you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Remember your baptism. Andy, I want you to name the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Remember your baptism and be thankful. See? <laughs> I want you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Jim, I want you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. So, those who are going to be ordained and or installed today, I ask you these questions. I'm one. All right? Okay. Do you... Do you <laughs> trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? 
Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be by the Holy Spirit, a unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Yeah. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? Will you, being instructed and led by those confessions, as you lead the people of God? I do, and I will. <laughs> Friends, will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide in its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? I will. Will you, in your own life, seek to follow Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? I do. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, and imagination? I will. To my deacons. Deacons, will you be a faithful deacon? teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need. In your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Amen. To my elders, will you be a faithful elder watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving and governing bodies of the church and in your ministry? Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I will. No? Now to the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept Sandy, Cindy, Jenny, and Michelle as deacons, and Sandy and Gordon as elders, chosen by God, through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. And please join me in the prayer of ordination. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your steadfast faithfulness to us. In every age, you have called forth leaders to serve you and equip them with your gifts. Among your people, Israel, you met you anointed prophets, priests, and rulers. You called pastors and teachers, bishops, elders, and deacons to build up your church. With Moses, the 70 elders bore the burdens of your people, ministering in the power of your spirit. Alongside the apostles, deacons cared for all in need and guarded the community's peace. In the church, deacons, elders, and pastors serve together so that your whole people might be equipped for ministry and to build up into a fully, full unity of Christ. For your service of servants of every age, O oh God, and for the church of Jesus Christ, we give you all thanks and praise. Friends, this is time where we are going to lay our hands on our deacons and elders. I'm going to ask that today hold out your hand and sweet Jesus and the Holy Spirit will bridge that gap. <laughs> so friends, let's start with our deacons. Deacons, we are covering you with our hands, our words, and our prayers and service. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit on Sandy, Cindy, Jenny, and Michelle. 
that they may be faithful deacons in the church. Give them openness to the Holy Spirit, leading that they may see and serve wherever there is need. Train them in prayer, and may they express compassion of Christ for the poor and the friendless, the sick, the grieving, and the troubled. Lord, equip them with courage to bear the gospel into the halls of power, to communicate your presence and might among those who are powerless. Lord, in everything, give them the mind of Christ who did not grasp at greatness but emptied himself to become a servant of your faith. Give them joy in their work as deacons and in their walk of faith, and a sure sense of abiding presence in their work of ministry. Can we get an amen? Amen. 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 Okay. Yeah. Rest your hand. Next to <laughs> Not for our elders. <laughs> Gordon and Sandy. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit on Gordon and Sandy, that they may be faithful elders of this church. Give them prudence and sound judgment wisdom and courage to order the life of your church in obedience to your word. Lord, nourish them in the life of the Holy Spirit. They may exercise the ministry of discipline and humility and compassion. Guide them in the governance of this session and in every court of the church that they may be servant leaders following Christ who came not to be served but to serve to give his life to set others free. Give them joy in their work and in their walk of faith and a sure sense of abiding presence in their work of ministry. Can we give an amen? amen. <laughs> Gracious Father, through your baptism and Holy Spirit, we are called to share in this ministry together. Pour your Holy Spirit upon all of us. Anoint us with your gifting so that we may come together and be the disciples. Lord, help us to proclaim the good news, to make new disciples, to be a light in this world, to share bread in the cup of cold water, to wash one another's feet. Make us strong in Christ as your people and show forth your saving love in the world by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you are now deacons and elders in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Let us welcome our new folks. <laughs> certificates of ordination or installation. Friends, as those are being passed out, I leave you with this charge. We are going through this as a church. Through the year, we pray about where our church is going to go, how we're going to serve, and who will our leaders be. We all have responded to that call. Thank you. You have been ordained today, if you have not been ordained before. You all have been installed today to act as service. And so I leave you with this charge from First Peter. Above all, Maintain constant love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, <laughs> serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as you one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. 
to him belongs the glory and power forever and ever. Friends, this is our time where we can share our joys and concerns or a ministry announcement. Uh, Zoom worshipers, you have been unmuted, so if you would like to share something, you are welcome to at this time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, well, my co-worker Joey, who lost his grandmother this week. I'd like to lift up our annual meeting, which will be immediately after the service. For those of you who happen to be watching uh, us on Facebook, our Facebook Live feature will be concluded at the end of worship. If you would like to listen or participate in our congregational annual meeting, you'll need to jump onto our Zoom link, which all of our church members see many of them at church. So they are out there. They participate. I think next week they're going to Ronald McDonald to serve food. So they are out and about and around. So I'm not making them up. <laughs> <laughs> they will make subs. Um, so if you need to um, order and go collecting, um, next week will be my last week collecting. And also I have sign up for nursery. Um, I don't have a clipboard, so I'll just have it out back if you uh, could help us out there. Yeah. We have many things. Yes. As a mom of these and thank you. So yeah. oh. it is fine or cute. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, something from Zoom. It's on it's well I'm here right now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Please say a prayer for the life to go easier for Ken and me. This is from Barb Pratt. Lord, we lift up the Pratt family. Lord, we ask that you bless them and anoint them with your comfort in this time. As they discern what to do each day. Give them comfort and direction and peace and ease of their burden. Yeah. Let us pray. <clears throat> Holy One, we lift up the things that mentioned today to you. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, bring comfort and healing. Make a pathway in the wilderness and make a stream in the desert. Lord, we give you praise for our youth. We give you praise for the mission trip coming up this summer and the fundraiser that will happen soon. Lord, we ask that you bless those gatherings so that our youth have new opportunities to be the hands of feet. Lord, be with us as we gather to talk about the year past and to prayerfully look at the year ahead. Holy Spirit, be present with us as we communicate and share and speak the words of love in our meeting today in every meeting in the years ahead. Holy One, we lift up our hearts to you. In your name, amen. We will now take some time to collect our Thank you. 
God, we ask that you bless these offerings, the offerings here, the offerings of our heart and our hands. Friend, I offer you, offer you this charge in benediction today. We are concluding our worship time, and when we leave this place, may we go from here being bold and brave with open minds to listen to the dreams of God, being courageous enough to change pathways when needed, with open hearts to care for those who need us right now, and for wisdom to plan for the future ahead. And to go with peace, God, the Creator, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ are with you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So um, if you are visiting with us today, uh, we are now going to transition to our <laughs> annual meeting. <laughs> Thank you so much um, for being for being here. You are welcome to stay. Um, but certainly do not do not need to. Um, friends, we are so thankful. So many of you have gotten the annual report. Um, digitally or have had it printed. I do.